Are you struggling with PCOS? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Justin Ebert, joined as always by Dr. Hugh Beatty. And Dr. Beatty, we're talking PCOS today specifically, but really we should give a, a heads up to our, our viewers. We're starting uh, a shift in the channel with this video. Uh, we will finish up the 30 causes of failure from Napoleon Hill because we're, we're most of the way through the, that video series. But once we're done with those 30 causes of failure, we are shifting everything on the channel to wellness and how to get people well. So they're going to start to see not just more of those videos, but we're really going to niche down onto some very particular aspects of wellness that I think they're really going to like. And so this PCOS video, Dr. Beatty, is going to kick off a 30-part series for us specifically related to hormones and achieving hormone balance. And it's going to go in conjunction with, I mean, not just what you're treating in the office, but with your book that's forthcoming and all of these things that are happening to help people here in the area get well. And so we want to start this video, Dr. Beatty, by, by addressing PCOS. But for those, like maybe most men watching this, what is it? Yeah, PCOS stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. And it is a problem that, that, um, that many women suffer with. And I, I see it in my office, but usually the first um, uh, time that doctors will see it is the GYN doctors. Those are the ones that the patient are coming in with symptoms. A lot of times the woman is presenting with the fact that her complaint is irregular periods, painful periods, what we call dysmenorrhea. Uh, a lot of times they're trying to get pregnant, they, they, they suffer an infertility, or maybe their primary care physician says, now you have prediabetes or diabetes. And um, so it could be a myriad presenting symptoms. Uh, they could also notice that they have ha uh, facial hair, hair on their chest. And so these are the kind of presenting symptoms. Then eventually they get the diagnosis of PCOS. Okay, so those are some important warning signs to be aware of. Uh, facial hair or, mm -hmm. or, or body hair, painful irregular periods, um, infertility, perhaps uh, in conjunction with some sort of uh, diabetes diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Uh, but those are, those are symptoms, Dr. Brady, what's, mm -hmm. what's behind it? What causes PCOS? Well, then also you can go to the next step of labs. And so, so if they come to my office, I always check insulin levels on every patient. So fast insulin levels are high in people with PCOS because they develop insulin resistance. They also can have elevated testosterone, but not always. So their blood testosterone level might, might be elevated. But the key is, is that you do a transvaginal or pelvic ultrasound, you look at their ovaries, and you see cysts on their ovaries. Okay. Multiple cysts on their ovaries. Okay. And that's, I mean, that, that's really what kind of maybe confirms that diagnosis. Yes. Is the, the, the cysts on the ovaries. Because, again, we don't want to, we don't want to, and this is that, that shift from medical treatment to wellness treatment, we don't want to just treat the symptoms. No. We want to treat the cause. And yes. the cause is the, the cysts on the ovaries, not the irregular painful periods, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and you're right about the cause. So the thing is syndrome, as we may have mentioned on the channel before, syndrome is basically a description of a myriad of symptoms and signs, but we okay. don't really know what causes it. There's other symptoms, there's irritable bowel syndrome, there's chronic fatigue syndrome, uh, AIDS is acquired immune deficiency syndrome. So it's looking for the true cause of it. But in functional medicine, it seems like a lot of times we narrow down that cause. Of course, it's inflammatory, but what is the inflammatory issue in this particular area? Mm. It's hormone imbalance. Yeah. So when these women present to me, I always start there. Because even the hormone that even medical doctors, the GYNs focus on is insulin. Yeah. But why is the insulin levels high in these patients? Why do they have insulin resistance? Why are they pre-diabetic or diabetic? And it really is the hormone imbalance that is taking place. That's why in the book that I've written, we talk about how hormones have to be in symphony. It's like an orchestra. Yes, they yeah. all have to play together. You know, your progesterone, testosterone will impact your insulin levels. Yeah. And your insulin levels will impact your, your sex hormones. Just like cortisol impacts insulin and all these other things, they come into play. It, it, it all works together, right? Yes. And I think that analogy, I mean, I've, I've, I've read the book, I think that analogy of your hormones must play in symphony and concert together is a yes. great one. Because what people don't realize is that w when it comes to just about every function mm -hmm. in the body... Right. Hormone balance is key, and yes. those those functions don't happen correctly if no. there is that hormone imbalance. And mm -hmm. this, 
uh, as I mentioned, is, is the part of a larger series where we're going to examine some of those hormone mm -hmm. imbalances. But this is an important one, Dr. Yes. Beatty, because it just it, it affects so many mm -hmm. women who struggle uh, with, again, those symptoms mm -hmm. and maybe aren't getting the answers because the doctor is trying to help mask or treat the symptoms and not the underlying cause. Yeah, I've been very successful in treating PCOS. Because usually by the time the women get to me, they really are concerned about their infertility. Yeah. They are trying to get pregnant and they have not been able to. And so when I screen them, when I do that consultation, I tell them what we need to do, the process we need to go through to, to make the correct diagnosis, then I already have a good idea what needs to be done. But yeah. I have to convince them. It is a hormonal thing that I look at. And the thing is clearly, consistently, not only – do a lot of these women have elevated testosterone levels, but they also have elevated estrogen levels. Hmm. And that estrogen imbalance or the estrogen dominance actually is precipitating the, the cyst on the ovaries. And when you get cysts on the ovaries like that, yes, you can release more testosterone. And, and then you get this imbalance between estrogen and testosterone and progesterone. And so the women like that tend to have low progesterone levels. And so that's why progesterone opposes estrogen. Testosterone uh, there's a aromatization process that takes it place in the belly. So the bigger the woman gets, the more she's converting her testosterone to estrogen. So uh, these women typically have high estrogen levels too. Hmm. And elevated estrogen and low progesterone will make you infertile. It will increase your risk of ovarian cysts. It will also increase your risk of uterine fibroids and cysts in the ovaries. So I see that it's not necessarily a testosterone thing. It's more of too much estrogen compared to the progesterone. Compared to progesterone. And that... Dr. Betty, I, I want to pause there because I think that that's good news for patients. Yes. Because what you just told them is that it's treatable. Yes, very treatable. <laughs> and that is something that doesn't get shared far too often, right? No, I mean, they get doesn't. told, uh, hey, yeah, you're, you're infertile. There's not a lot you can do. So mm -hmm. if, if you want to, yeah, I guess you can look mm -hmm. at sur surrogacy or adoption or foster mm -hmm. care, mm -hmm. right? But what you're saying is – it's actually a hormone imbalance, and we can do something about it so that you mm -hmm. can have those natural biological mm -hmm. kids that you've wanted your whole life. Yeah. So before the patient presents to me, there are things they can do on their own. Okay. They can try to lose weight. It's very difficult when you have PCOS, but they can try to lose weight. They can uh, start doing intermittent fasting. I know we have videos. We talked about that on the channel. They can exercise more. They can build up muscle. When you build muscle, you can lower the insulin resistance. The insulin resistance does impact their fertility. In addition to that, they can lower their stress levels. The stress cortisol impacts testosterone levels as well. In addition to that, um, they can take appropriate vitamins and supplements way before they take the recommended metformin and spironolactone. Mm. Metformin lowers insulin resistance, so a lot of the women will come to me already on metformin. But the metformin hasn't corrected the problem. They will come to me on spironolactone, which is a diuretic, that can lower testosterone levels, but also can treat, can slow down the problem with facial hair and body hair on their chest. So they come already with these things that are not satisfied, and they still aren't getting pregnant. And so when I have dealt with their progesterone and balanced their progesterone with their estrogen, all of a sudden now the cyst becomes manageable. The insulin resistance come down. They can start losing weight. And progesterone is a progestation. That's the name where it comes from. It promotes pregnancy. So you put these women on progesterone, you'd be amazed how the infer their fertility improves. And that is the good news for you that we want to highlight. It can be treated, and it is something that if you have been dealing with PCOS, Dr. Beatty has had lots of success in his office helping to treat that. And if your hormones are in balance, if you're experiencing any of those symptoms, facial hair, body hair, painful irregular periods, uh, been diagnosed as diabetic or pre-diabetic, uh, Dr. Brady listed off a whole bunch of, of other potential symptoms. It is a hormone imbalance. And so if you have gone to your primary care, you don't feel like you're being listened to. You're not getting the results or the answers you want. It's probably because they are treating the symptoms and not the cause. So find that functional wellness doctor who's willing to treat the cause, get you healthy, get your hormones in balance, and get your life back on track. That happens to be Dr. Betty, my co-host. Make sure you subscribe, like this channel, tune in for future videos as we kick off this 30-part series on hormones. What are your thoughts about PCOS? And I have a myriad thoughts about PCOS. And so I asked her, is there anything particular you want to ask me? 
And what she relayed is that she has a lot of different symptoms and signs related to PCOS. And she has not gotten any uh, consistent information back from her physician and surely has not improved with what they recommended. She's asked me, is there diet things she can do, exercise and things like that? Yes, it definitely is. But what I find is the best thing about treating PCOS and being effective is looking at her hormones and making sure that you understand which hormones are imbalanced and correct the imbalance. I find that progesterone therapy is the key hormone that is always deficient in PCOS. So if you're struggling with PCOS, it's not the end of your life. You just need to come see me, Dr. Hugh Beatty, The Wellness Doctor.